Today I'm going to talk about trees and their building blocks. My name is Heidi Seibold. Decision trees are pretty cool. So let's say you want to decide if you go to a party. You can use a decision tree for that. So let's say you go to parties if there are cool and nice people. If there are no cool or nice people, you think about, okay, is there at least lots of food? And if there is, you might still go to the party. If there's no cool people and not a lot of food, then you might stay at home. When we use decision trees um, in research, then we use usually um, trees that create the decisions uh, in a data-driven way. And here are some recent examples from, yes, studies and research that I found um, in the past months. And this is pretty cool because they're using the R package that we're providing. So this is uh, the party kit R package. And it's really nice to see that people are just reusing the work that we've built. So the first example here is for uh, stroke research. And the second one is an ecological paper. So completely different research fields use trees for their research. Now, we do research on trees. So we create software for trees and we work with trees um, and create new tree methods. So we have to think about how do we actually create trees and what are the building blocks of these trees. And the most important part is the selection of the split variable and the split point. So what is a split variable? A split variable could in our first example with the party be whether there's a nice host, um, how much food there is, whether there's good music, cool people, and the number of people as well. Um, and then of course we need to create the decision split, right? And that can be done by either um, yeah, choosing one or the other category, so yes or no, for example, or um, other category splits, or if we have a variable with many categories that are um, on a scale, then we would have the split point somewhere on that scale. Now, the big question in uh, trees is how do we actually select the two, the split variable and the split point? Now let's look into an example of our R package where we implement conditional inference trees. So how do those um, select the split variable and the split point? Let's first look at the split variable. To select the split variable, we go through all the possible uh, split variables. So again, that may be the, in our example, the amount of people, the amount of food, whether the people are cool, the host is nice, and so on. And we do an independence test between these split variables and our outcome variable, which would in the example be whether the party is valuable to go to or not, um, or it could also be other things. So we go through all these split variables and the outcome and do um, independence tests. Um, so if you think about independence tests, what are you looking for? We're looking for correlation. So in these little pictograms here, um, we see first in the first one, we see on the y axis, we see y and in the x axis, we see the first split variable and there seems to be sort of a connection in the second pictogram for set two, we don't see very much. So here we would select probably the first one. And we select that corresponding to the smallest p-value in the independence test. And then once we selected the split variable, we have to select the split point. And so what we do there, we go through all possible split points in the selected split variable and select the one corresponding to the greatest discrepancy in y's between the subgroups created. And so here in the pictogram on the right, you see how we're moving through all the possible split points in Z1, and then we would probably select something there here in the middle. 
Now let's compare that to another popular um, tree algorithm, which is the card tree. There um, we have a bit of a different um, strategy because we're going through all the split variables and split points at once and um, choose the variable and split point that corresponds to the lowest loss. So in this essence, if we would keep to this two step approach where we first select the split variable and then the sele select the split points, we could um, describe the strategy such that in the first selection step, we keep all the split variables. And in the second selection st step, we go through all the split points and all the variables that we kept and select the one corresponding to the lowest loss. Now, um, you might think, well, could I also exchange some of these bits between the two algorithms? Could we, for example, do a two-step approach where we first select the split variable in a similar way as, for example, in the traditional inference trees, or um, also select maybe many, many, but not all the split variables in the first step and then keep doing what's done in cart. And um, I can already spoiler, the answer is yes. Now let's look at another set of um, algorithms. Here we're comparing the conditional inference trees with model-based trees. Both of these algorithms are implemented in PartyKit. And here we see that they're actually very similar. So again, in MOP we're doing an independence test, but just this time we're not um, testing between ZJ and uh, Y, but ZJ and the model scores. That means we're first computing a model, a very simple model usually. So let's say something like um, with one covariate that's binary. So for example, the treatment, which I'm using a lot in my research. And then we create, we have this model and from this model, we extract the scores, so these uh, residuals, and do an independence test between the ZJ and the model scores, which essentially measures how, um, whether there's any instabilities in the parameters of the model, right? And then again, we select um, the split variable corresponding to the smallest p-value. And then in the second step, we go through all possible split points in our selected split variable and sec select the, the one that corresponds to the greatest likelihood. So we c compute the split point, then we compute the two new models in the um, subgroups that we create through that and compute the likelihoods of those two models and then add them together and see um, which split points creates or leads to the greatest likelihood. Now, the thing is um, that we're using independence tests for both the C tree and the model based tree. Um, but funnily enough, we're using different kinds of tests for those. And that has historical reasons because we started developing or <laughs> my uh, collaborator started developing those two methods independently. And um, so uh, Torsten and in the conditional inference trees implemented uh, the permutation test um, according to Strasser and Weber, and Achim in model-based trees implemented the fluctuation tests. But at some point we thought, okay, could we actually switch or use the fluctuation and fluctuation tests also for C tree and the other way around? And of course, again, the answer is yes. Yes, we can. And what we did for that is that, that we essentially wrote a new basis for both uh, the mob algorithm and the C-tree algorithm that allows the two to use each other's strategies. And we go even further and created a functionality that we call X-tree for extensible tree that allows you to select um, different functions for the variable selection as well of the, as the split selection strategy. So we really see that at, as two separate steps now and you just plug in a different uh, function for whatever you want to do. And this is something that we're 
still currently developing so this is not super easy to do but we're working on it so um, this will be available sometime soon and the cool thing about it is that if we have this functionality where we can just like pick and choose different um, variable selection and split selection um, functionality then we can try out many new things and do and build our research upon that and really easily compare different strategies which is really cool and i'm really excited about the image that you see here um, actually fits quite well because this is a paper boy and the paper boy is uh, used to screen x tree x tree if there was a special issue of the paper out now i'm already coming to an end um, if you're interested now in the um, things that I talked about, then first of all, look at our software, which is the party kit package. And there's lots of software that's built around that. So we have, for example, the ggparty package for really cool visualization based on ggplot or model for you, which is an R package for um, trees that that's focused on personalized medicine. So um, the two algorithms that I talked about, MOB and Ctree, they're ready to go. They've been implemented for years already. Um, the work that is currently in progress and in, that we're going to present hopefully very soon is Xtree. It's already sort of there. We're st it's still a work in progress, so you can expect a couple of changes there. Um, all of this is, of course, uh, not only my work, but it's joint work with Moritz Lang, Lisa Schlosser, Susanne Daniel, Thorsten Hoton, and Achim Pfeilers. Um, that's it. Thanks for listening.